Metal Pot Repair, What Tinkering Really Is, William Hovey Smith, 2013. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and here I'm repairing one of the sacred implements of the hunt. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and today we are going to do something that you have likely never, ever seen. We are going to tinker a pot. Move. Huh? Well, to tell you what tinkering is, uh, once upon a time, uh, starting in the medieval period, there were, in fact, tinkers. T-I-N-K-E-R-S. And these were itinerant workmen who went from place to place and made a living repairing broken metal pots. Yeah! Well, pots were hard to come by, and they were expensive. So when one got a hole in it, or it lost its handle, or whatever, uh, yeah, you saved it till when the tinker came by, and then he would hopefully fix it. Well, as it turned out, uh, tinkers in England couldn't make very much money. And they found they could not live on the few half pennies that they got for repairing a pot. So, uh, they expanded their trades. And so they came to be people who repaired anything mechanical that was broken. So the tinker would come and he would try to fix broken locks and clocks and guns and horse tack and wagons and anything else that needed fixing. Well, as it turned out, uh, he did not do a lot of these things very well. Uh, hence, tinkering became known as a field where you tried to do something, but it probably didn't work out quite right, or if it worked at all, it didn't last very long. Well, the reason for this is, of course, a poor tinker had to learn many, many trades. Unlike the locksmith and the, or the gunsmith, uh, who worked only in one class of objects, a poor tinker had to be expected to fix anything. Well, and make do with whatever he happened to have or could find to make this thing work. So quite commonly he used substitute materials to replace broken parts that were originally made of steel and of course they did not last nearly as long. So sometimes just as soon as the tinker got out of sight, the part of whatever it was failed. Well, uh, he could do little else with what he had. So, uh, we are going to proceed to tinker a pot. Now, this particular pot was made in Switzerland, and I bought it in 1968 when I was doing geology in Alaska. As a matter of fact, I bought it with the rest of the camp gear that I was going to take out all summer long to the chicken district, and yeah, there really is such a place, and a town of chicken in Alaska to do my thesis in geology. And so we have cooked hundreds of meals out of this pot. Well, on my most recent trip to Cumberland Island, the pot developed two small pinholes. Whoa! Now I'll show you a still picture where you can actually see them. And here is the pot. So we are going to take a small metal rod here, our trusty camp axe, mm -hmm and coal forge a little metal to seal these holes. And we're going to try it out by actually cooking on it. So, okay. Let's get started here. Brand new axe, homemade sheath. Okay. Stainless steel plate. And find our offending holes right here and right here. Okay, and we're going to see if we can move a little metal around these holes and seal them. Thank you. 
That looks better, but I actually punctured the pot again. There's another one now formed. All right. Okay, we're going to get that one. Okay, no visible holes. All right, Let's the bottom of the pot a little bit. Okay. Feel good. All right, we will see how we did. Uh, we have here a soup containing deer meat. Well, we hunters have such things. Inspection of the bottom of the pot. So far, so good. Nothing's leaking through, but that's pretty viscous stuff right now. Put it on heat. Uh, we shall see. If the repair fails, what will happen is liquid will start dripping from the bottom of the pot and get in the flame and start discoloring the flame. Now this particular pot is interesting. Uh, it has gone on many hunts with me. And in fact, these marks that you see right here those are the scratches from sheep's teeth. Yeah, I shot a doll ram in Alaska and carried this ram out on the top of my pack and its teeth from the skull actually scratched the pot. Well, so far so good. So now the stew is thinning considerably. Now what that experience tells me, if you really want to tinker a pot, that you need something, you, your rod needs to have a rounded head. The only rounded head thing that we have in common use right now is a ball-peen hammer. And if you ever wondered why people made such hammers with those rounded heads, that is for actually displacing metal. In short, yeah, this would have been a tool used by a tinkerer. And the rod that I use would have worked much better if the head had had a rounded ball on it like this so that the edges did not push sharply against the metal itself. So that is one thing learned from this experiment. Should I ever do it again, I will make me such a tool. Okay, dunner is served. Our tinkering was successful. So now we can enjoy our lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Again, this is a picture of the bottom of the pot with the two original holes in it, as well as the overall picture. Now, I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, Extreme Muzzle Loading, and Practical Bow Fishing, and all of these are available as soft cover and ebooks. I also have an eight book ebook series on muzzle loading, with the most recent being Hunting Big and Small Game with Muzzle Loading Pistols.
Should you travel to the Middle East or Asia where they still hand make cooking pots from copper, buy some of these things. They are good and well worth shipping home. For more information on my books, blogs, videos, go to my website at www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.